Howdy everybody, it is I, your friendly neighborhood Skook with a Uke, coming at you again from the garage. Actually, it's again again, because uh, I filmed a video earlier, and for some reason it just like deleted itself from my computer, and I don't know if it was like a startup drive thing, of it just kind of like not holding on to it or whatever it is, but for whatever reason, the video that I recorded earlier was uh, not not good, and in it, housekeeping, I was smoking some Sutliff coffee out of my dwarf cobbit. I'm pretty sure it's the dwarf, because I don't, I don't think I have the elf. And uh, now, once I'm done recording this, I'm gonna enjoy some Stonehenge flake in my Dr. Graybo freehand, so it's gonna be two pipe kind of day. It's actually pretty cold. I'm lucky enough to have a, a heated garage here. Uh, it's not my personal garage, it's, it's my dad's garage, but uh, a lot of the tools that I own live here too, so. And I'm gonna be trying out uh, this new mic because a lot of my videos in the past had been kind of quiet, uh, and I think it's just because the internal mic on uh, my computer is just not super great. So I got one of these new Dealy Bobs for Christmas, so we're gonna give it a test run and see how it goes. Uh, this is my own video response to my 100 sub giveaway. The 100 sub giveaway, by the way, it is only uh, January 3rd, so you've still got seven whole days, that's right, a whole week, to do a video response and enter in a drawing for uh, the prizes, which I left upstairs, uh, I'll, I'll see if I can get a picture of it. Uh, it's gonna include a Zippo that I engraved uh, YTPC on, and then you can let me know what you want engraved on the back, whether you want like a corn cob pipe, or you want your initials, or a nickname, or whatever you want engraved on the back, we can do it, as long as it's not something ridiculously long. Uh, and then it's also going to include a log cigar, which has been aged in my humidor, and they are an awesome cigar, but they make you smell uh, pretty intense, so don't, like, smoke it before you go to a wedding or something. Unless it's, like, a really super cool wedding. Uh, and I'm also going to include some tobaccos, one of which is definitely the Moravian Seminary in which I made. So, uh, and also before I do the VR, I just noticed uh, my super cool... Uh, Knife. My dad got uh, these knives for all of his hunting buddies and, and hiking buddies, and uh, then one for my, my twin brother and I, and so it's the Maracnel? I don't know. It's the, the Swedish knife company, and I actually have one of their carving knives, which is really great. It's just got a really good grip for like getting into like small carving details, uh, which I really like. But this knife is pretty sweet. It's got a, a nice blade on it. Uh, I've really enjoyed it so far. I like that it's bright red, I guess. I, I'm colorblind, so uh, I'm gonna say it's bright red. I'm gonna just call it. Um, so I really like that it's bright red, and normally I'm not a huge fan of, like, plastic sheaths, but this one, if you look up close, it's kind of got this, like, little fish hook thing going on, and so although it's got a little bit of flex, once it's on your belt, it's really on your belt, and it's actually, like, a pretty sturdy... Uh, plastic, so I'm, I'm pretty impressed with it so far. If I become more or less impressed, I'll keep everybody posted. Uh, so, video response to myself. The VR, by the way, I'm gonna post a, a link to the video for the 100 sub giveaway, and for your VRs, please just put a link in the comments of that video. I will put it in the description of this video. Uh, please just link that into your comments on the original video so I know where to find them. I'm very bad at technology, as you can probably tell since I lost the video earlier. But anyway, so the question is, uh, things that you've done with your siblings, uh, or things that you've done with, with friends that feel like siblings, kind of like traditions, or if you just have a short, uh, short story or a long story that you want to share, I'd love to hear all of them. I talked last time about uh, my siblings and I all getting together around the, the holidays and we build a gingerbread house, either we do like a competition and we split off into pairs or we all come together and make one big gingerbread house and, and then afterwards in January we, we take them out into this, uh, to this property and uh, we just shoot them to bits, it's great. We start with the rifles and, and then you move on to shotguns and it's just super fun to watch a gingerbread house explode. <laughs> but uh, the other thing that I wanted to share, uh, my, my VR on uh, kind of my friends and, and something that we do. In uh, undergrad, uh, I went to Lebanon Valley College. Love that, love that college. And it, there I was in a, a co-ed fraternity, Alpha Phi Omega. It's founded on uh, the Boy Scouting principles. And then uh, later on the Girl Scouts got involved too. And, and I've always, I've been a Girl Scout my whole life, lifetime Girl Scout, uh, got my gold, did all that good stuff. 
uh, was involved with some some Boy Scout troops with hikes and stuff with my, my twin brother's troops and and uh, all, all that good stuff. And right now I'm actually a co-leader for my sister's troop, which is cool. So that's what I did in, in, in college. And I've got two friends there that are like my best friends that uh, we all get together in the summertime and we, we get together for like a weekend in the woods and we go hiking and sometimes there's some kayaking and there's always uh, some nice cigars and, and some good beer, which is uh, a plus side. Uh, but one thing that we started doing was trying to find the halfway point of the Appalachian Trail. The cabin that we stay at is in Michau State Park, which is very close to the halfway point. It's actually the halfway points right in there uh, of the Appalachian Trail. And uh, I'm huge Appalachian Trail junkie. Someday I would really just love to, to maybe not through hike it. I don't know if I have the stamina to through hike, but um, definitely want to hike at least all of it, even if it's just in parts. But uh, I spent a lot of my, my summers going down, there's like a, almost like a malt shop there where you can stop off the trail and do the gallon challenge. Uh, so a lot of hikers would come off of the trail and go down for, for, their, for their ice cream. And then you can read the, the log books if you've ever been on any part of the AT. It's a trail that's got a lot of log books where you can read different uh, people's names of, of their, their through hiker names, if they're a through hiker or uh, from where they're coming and where they're going. And, and it's really cool. Uh, it's a very cool, cool thing to do. And it's a very cool experience to be able to da go down there and talk to these people. But uh, my friends and I, I, I've been to the halfway point of the Appalachian Trail a couple times, but never leading a group of people there myself. So we got on the one trail the first year that we were there, and it was just the wrong trail completely. So we did not find the Appalachian Trail's halfway point uh, that time. Then the next year, we figured out exactly where the trail was, and we knew where we were going, so we even met a really nice guy with a, a very thick accent, and he said, yeah, you're gonna go down that way, and we're like, okay, perfect, we know exactly where we're going. So we, we hiked like two miles in, and it's supposed to be like one mile in. So we hiked two miles in, and figured out that we were at the wrong, maybe we were at the wrong spot, we weren't really sure. So we turned around and started going down the other end of the trail two miles, and of course it started pouring down rain. So we went and we hiked and we couldn't find it. So we hopped in my car, wet and miserable, and we went back to the cabin and showered off and then we had some, some really nice cigars again. But uh, I was talking with my grandfather then, and he said, well, no, apparently they moved the halfway point of the Appalachian Trail. And the reason that that happens is because uh, certain parts of the AT are on uh, privately owned land and, and natural things that kind of happen with the land, like uh, different dams that occur and, and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure you could read about it and have it explained much better than the way that I'm just kind of paraphrasing it. Uh, but anyway, they had moved the halfway point of the AT. So we did not find it again. Uh, and we plan on doing that again next summer. So we're very excited to not find the halfway point of the Appalachian Trail again. So it's funny, but that's that's kind of the story that I wanted to share of of uh, what I do with, with, with my, my friends there. They're really like like family to me. So I thought that would be a fun story of uh, the time that we didn't find the halfway point of the Appalachian Trail. So once again, uh, I appreciate everybody so much. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching and liking and commenting. It's just been a really awesome experience in the last couple of uh, years to be a part of the YTPC. And now I'm able to kind of be more involved in it. So I just wanted to thank everybody so much. Uh, good luck to everybody that's going to be entering in the contest. Once you do your video response, please do put it in the comment section of the original video, which will be put down in the description here. And thank you so much. Have an awesome day.